Good afternoon, morning, everyone. It's um, March 16th, 2015, and I think this is our 21st mastermind call. Is that correct, Chad? That is right. It's right. April, awesome. not, April, not April. March. But <laughs> I'm sorry, you broke up. It's April 16th, not March 16th, but otherwise, you're good. Uh, you were always <laughs> close. <laughs> Thank you. You're right. It is. See, I'm a month behind the time. Thank you very much for correcting me there. You're, you're 100% correct. Um, I always like it. I usually start these calls with administrative stuff, guys. We, we really have had no issues this week. Um, I just want to remind, since we got virtually all new people on the call, the most common um, – thing that ha happens that isn't real desirable is that your you leads, when your first batch of leads come, you don't want them to go into junk mail or spam, so make sure you white you whitelist us in, in whatever contact manager you're using. And uh, if anybody does, anybody does not know how to, how to whitelist, is anybody on the call that doesn't know how to do that? Yes. All right, we got a, we got a start. smart group. I'm going to try to find who that is and mute out. Sorry. There we go. I found you. Um, so I don't have any news to share other than welcome to Aaron's group. Um, we had an awesome call, and uh, about half of you that were on that call I've spoken to in the last two or three days. You've kept me busy. But I love the energy. I love the enthusiasm. I appreciate all you guys that, uh, that took the time to call me and took the time to show up today. Chad, do you have anything you want to share? Um, one of the things that, that since we do have such a high density of, of people from, from the lead gen scripts and object, objections group, uh, part of the benefit of, of being with that group and signing up through all the leads was mentioned in the call that we would have a free coaching session. What Aaron and I have decided is probably the most valuable and the most efficient for everybody. We're actually going to fast track his training and he, he's uh, he's going to go through it in like three days. We're going to do everything that we teach and videotape it. So you guys will essentially have access to a, a, a customized course of basically everything we, we teach and coach. We're going to move through it fast and aggressively, but you'll, it'll be a recorded session. So you can always refer back to it and use it to train your people, whether you have VAs or team members or if it's just you working by yourself. So. Probably by the end of next week, that's something that, that we'll send out to all the, mm -hmm. all the members. Mm -hmm. Lead Very cool. Group. Thank you. Yeah. And that's something that might, normally they're they're one on one sessions, and we take you know three or four hours or longer, um, and and custom tailor it. We're going to try to make it fit, or we are going to make it fit from a single agent who's just starting out all the way up to you know a seasoned veteran that just has awesome systems in place already. And the whole point of it, guys, is to really help just get you through the learning curve of this because it is something new. It's not, you know, it's not really being coached anywhere else. It's, it's to just shorten your learning curve and build this into your business in such a way as it's not disruptive to any of your other, other strategies that, that you're working on. So we'll try to address things like it's three sessions. Session one is on strategy, like, you know, getting your why clear and, and getting your team in place. Session two is on systems. How do we integrate this into what we're already doing as realtors? And session three is on sales. And that's probably where you guys get the most time of you. You know, what questions I ask and what a Hello. Hello. Hey, Chad, I am. Chad, I have muted everybody, and accidentally I unmuted you too. Sorry if I, I muted you. <laughs> yeah. So, I sorry, Chad, but repeat the last two sentences. I muted you out by accident. Anyway, Started so three. because of, because of our schedules, we'll be doing that next week. So look look toward the end of next week. We should have that Thank resource for you uh, specifically for the group. Excellent, guys. These calls are. It, one thing I just wanted to add to what Chad said. It, it's really interesting. One of the biggest questions I hear from people is, "Well, I don't know anything about probate." And honestly, to actually complete the transaction, you really don't need to know much. They have a probate attorney that takes care of all the legal aspects. 
Um, but you do have to come across as confident and being an expert in being able to help these people. And the biggest element of that is just putting your team together, you know, your, your uh, estate clean-out company, your contractor, your investor, uh, a junk-out company, and just talking to them with confidence that, that you can help them sell the home and you can offer them multiple options. But as far as the actual logistics of the sale, most of our clients tell us it's really a lot easier than a regular transaction. I know my own experience, I've done 14 of these in the last six months. I've been on one listing appointment, which I love <laughs> because uh, typically, the, depending on what part of the country you're in, the heirs are scattered all over the country. So very often, you don't even need to go on a listing appointment. It's just basically a phone conversation. You send off the, uh, the information and you get it back. So I just don't want anybody to be intimidated to think you have to be a probate attorney to do this. Really, you have to have a basic overall knowledge of how you can help them, and you have to be able to convey that to them. And the rest of it kind of takes care of itself. Um, guys, this is your call. There's about 35 of you um, who has some questions. First of all, anybody have any I think everybody in the call is brand new, so I'm probably not going to get any wins, but I'll ask anybody. Is, anyway, has anybody had a big uh, win with propate this week? Nope. I don't think we have any of our seasoned veterans on the call, so I, I guess that was kind of a, a I got, rhetorical. I got, Go ahead. I, got my letters, I got my letters set up in my database and tweak them and edit them. Protocol 3, Len, you have a call holding on Park 101. Roslyn, Park 101, please. Did you understand well, that, Chad? No. Yeah, she said she got her letters set up and she got all of her leads in her in the database. That's awesome. Like that's yeah. A great start. I have a couple of questions. Please. Okay. Shoot. Okay. Um, the leads are going to be coming from. I'm in Florida, so this is an attorney state. Are the leads coming from? the courthouse for cases that are already in probate and have attorneys set up? Yeah, so it would yes. probably be okay. helpful if we just kind of let you know what the data fields are. So the, you're, it's going to come to you in a CSV spreadsheet, very simple. Okay. You're going to have the, the deceased name, the date of the death, the date of the probate filing, which is usually about two months on average between the, from the date of the death. Um, you're going to have the the deceased last known address, and then you'll have a personal representative or executor name, address, usually up to three phone numbers for that person if you if you decided to buy the phone numbers. You'll also have the attorney who's, who's representing them and his physical address and phone numbers. Um, depending on what your marketing strategy is, you'll use some to all of that information. Really the most relevant information is the executor his phone numbers, the attorney, and his and their phone numbers. Um, and you can, you know, we tell folks you can really double your surface area. If you are in a state where you have attorney information, you can market consecutively to the executors as well as the attorney and kind of double your surface area. And if I could just add to, if I could add to that, um, you don't have to get the attorney's permission to list the property. That's 100% up to the executor. So. The, the executor is now business, but the agents that are really looking to, to multiply their results are looking at the attorneys as a long-term relationship that they can build and turn it into, you know, down-the-road referrals. One, one, of the, one of the cleverest people, uh, Paul Hayhurst, I don't think he's on the call. He's up in uh, the Space Coast in Florida. But, you know, he called all the executors, and he said, I think he was the guy that he got six uh, listings his first month. And after he'd gone through all the executors, he noticed that when he looked at his leads, about five or six attorneys, probate attorneys, were doing about half of them. So he identified who the probate attorney players were, the ones that were doing multiple deals. And first, first he started calling and saying, hey, this is Paul Hayhurst with Remax Realty. And, of course, he'd get a secretary or a gatekeeper. And then he said he changed his strategy when he would call the executor, Mr. Smith, regardless of the conversation, he would say, do you mind if I call your attorney? And, of course, Mr. Smith said, no, you can call my attorney. And then he would call the attorney, Mr. Johnson, and he wouldn't say, this is Paul Harris with Remax. He'd say, my name is Paul. I just spoke to Mr. Smith, and he asked me to call Mr. Johnson about his probate. <laughs> he'd, get, he'd get right through to the attorney almost every time. 
it's, uh, I just thought that was so clever. It's, it's a little sneaky, but it allowed him to have some really good conversations with the attorneys. And last time we talked to him, I think he had, I think he had at least two attorneys that, um, that he really gained their confidence, and they were starting to refer probates to them before they were to him before they were filed. So that can that can be a really good long term strategy for getting a lot of business. You, you have to understand most of these attorneys do not go out of their way to recommend a realtor because they don't want to, you know, to take the blame if it doesn't turn out. So it's, it's, it requires, um, I know Sandra Marconi uh, has probably done as good of a job with that as anybody said, right, in uh, Houston, Texas. She actually uh, does a phone call, then she follows up with the package to the attorney. You know, she actually mails them something that they can look at, like a credibility package, and then she follows up to make sure that they got it. But I, number one, I would start with the executors. You guys got to build yourself some business. But as more of a long-term strategy, if you've got a, someone else that can focus on the attorneys or if you have enough time, I would definitely not overlook that. That's a valuable source of data. What other questions, guys? Uh, it'll come in a CSV. I noticed on the website that um, if you wanted to download this into a CRM, um, it was talking about um, top producer. Uh, is that a is that the if you don't have top producer, are, are there other options? Um, and maybe I'm not understanding the the direct mail program. I looked into what your site offers, but it didn't specifically give any price ranges. If you know the 26, I think it was a 26 week you know, done for you program with the mail house. Can you go into that a little bit more? So the mail is, is for anyone who hasn't seen it, there's a mail order form under subscriber benefits in the middle of the, the menu on at all the leads.com. It's a very simple mail order form. You go in there and you click letter one, letter two, letter three, put in your information and it will actually do the mail merge for you. If you have a letter you've written yourself, you can upload a custom letter there as well. Um, you choose your spacing, 14 days or 30 days. Um, you choose, you know, and then you can put notes in the bottom. The cost is going to be less than a dollar fifty, and I wish I don't even know how it's it's actually priced out. There's obviously volume discounts, so if you're in a market that's doing 10,000 letters a month, it's going to be different than if you're in a market that's sending 50 letters a month. But and that includes know, postage, stuffing envelopes? So the envelopes are hand-addressed with a live first-class stamp, and it comes in a, a an irregular, sh like a birthday card envelope. Oh. So you, you pretty much have a 100% open rate <clears throat> just because of the, the nature of the mail. And what I, what I find is I list a lot of houses from mail that went six months ago. You know, they'll call me, and I'm like, well, I look in my database, and they haven't gotten a letter from me for three, four months. So that tells me that that mail sticks around. It doesn't end up in the trash. It, it sits around on the refrigerator or on the countertop, and, and eventually, if it didn't get opened immediately, it gets opened and, and it gets read, and, and we, get, we get come list me calls off of those. They're um, hand-addressed, the envelopes? It's a very, very high-quality printer. And you would be nine out of ten people could not tell that it was not hand addressed. But we've got oh. a font. We've got a font that looks exactly like a gel tip pen, and it's I mean uh, with with incredible detail. Um, so they they look hand addressed, and it, so it, it literally looks like somebody sent you a birthday card. Wow. Um, so that's that's how we get high open rates, and and I would say that you know you're probably getting a hundred percent open rate. And different people respond to different things. But so on average, you know, a direct mail campaign is going to yield about a 1% response rate. We nearly always beat that. Um, what most folks do is they send three letters with 30-day spacing and then try to hit your phone calls on the days that your letters are not. What I recommend and what we do in our office is the day our leads come in, we will place the mail order from the form, upload one spreadsheet, just the CSV file, just upload it once, and order three letters with 30-day spacing, and we don't touch it again. So we've ordered a quarter's worth of mail, and we did it in, in one fell swoop, and you just don't worry about it from then on. So it's pretty much automatic. As soon as I order the mail, 
I go, and it depends, like, you know, everybody has different CRM. So you can do this in your CRM. You can set up a custom action plan, or you can just use your calendar. But as soon as I order the mail, I go straight to the calendar and put in reminders for each of those mail drop dates. Uh -huh. And then with, within one or two business days, I put in reminders to make phone calls after the letters hit. And the point of that is to make it a warm phone call versus just a total cold call. Hi, this is Chad. I sent you a letter last week. Just wanted to follow up, make sure you got that, you understood why we sent it, and see if there's any way that we can uh, provide value to you and your family and, and, and you know, in, in this situation. And that way it's just a little bit of a warmer message. I don't make the calls myself, and I know a lot of the people on this call are going to be shaking their head at me, but I just I have so many different things and so many different companies that I use Ringless Voicemail. The folks that have made five calls, and I try to keep all these stories straight in my head, like Paul, uh, David Bryant, his team, they sat down before they even sent mail. They made 250 cold calls without a letter, and they, they've they set 25 listing appointments. And like Jim said, we haven't seen them since. Um, what we know is it, it's working because they keep, they, you know, they keep doing it, and, and it, it's, it's became their business. So they had a 10 to 1 ratio on these leads in a, a not such a big market, and, and they were, they're just loving it. So if you can make live calls, that's always going to be best. If you're looking for automation, we offer Hi. tools for that. Is my truck out of the way enough? <laughs> okay, great. I'll, I'll try to move that truck <laughs> off the uh, – I'll try to use that truck out. Yeah. Go ahead, Chad. I'm going to mute a lot of you out. I'll let you in one at a time. Just like – Chad, you still there? Yes, I am. Okay, good. I want to make sure I didn't mute you out again. I think I found the person with the truck. Go ahead. So, guys, since there's so many new people, I mean, I'll try to just uh, – the, the, the best first thing you can do is anything. And one of the great quotes that came out of these calls, most people don't know where to start. They, they you know, look at the campaign outline. Don't let it overwhelm you. That that could be your five-year plan to kind of get running on all – hitting on all cylinders. But if, there, if there's any one gift I could give everyone, it would be what Jim said earlier, is confidence. So get really clear on why why you're doing this and what value you can provide the community, and also get your team built around you. So you you those two things will just exude confidence on the phone, and it makes a huge difference. So make sure you've got a title attorney that can deal with really messy titles or or a closing company. They're one and the same, um, interchangeable in most most situations. Make sure you have an estate sale company that can come in and handle one of the most stressful things for people is, oh, my, you know, my mom had all this stuff and we're out of state and I don't have time to fly down there and deal with this. If you can step up and layer, layer in a piece of value, of, well, hey, that's fine. I understand we see this often. We actually have one of, one of our partners is an estate sale special, estate sale company, and they can come in and assess the property tell you whether or not a tag sale or an auction is going to yield the most money. They work on a, a percentage of the sales, and we donate what doesn't sell. So don't worry about that. That's no big deal. I'll take care of it. All you have to worry about is mailing me a key. So there's little things like that. So get your estate sale company. Get your clean-out crew. Get a contractor that will do anything from, you know, trimming a door to flipping a house. And, you know, then your, your obvious vendors that you use every day, your photographers, your stagers, you know, people like that. And what that does is when you get on the phone, you know that there's not a better person they can call because you understand their situation, you're doing this for the right reason, and you've got all the team members in place to pull the trigger on a strategy tomorrow that will get them out of that situation faster than any other realtor in town. So while you're waiting on leads, most of the people that signed up this week, you're going to have a week to kind of think about this and develop out a strategy. Get clear on your why. Get your team members in place. And what I've come to call my, my 20 second USP, you've got about a 20 second window to really just impress the hell out of these people. And that is what I just talked about. So I'm really glad you called Mr. Smith. Let me help you understand a little bit about how we got where we are and why we do what we do. We actually reach out to executors on a periodic basis through public record research and because uh, we believe there's a better way. You know, we saw, and, and this is me personally, I saw 77% of homes in my market that had the, the word state or at all, the private market. 
expire because they were under-marketed and they were overpriced. And I believe there's a better way. So I've actually built a team around me. You know, so if we if it means bringing you a cash offer tomorrow or closing in a week, helping you get the personal property sold to get the most money, reinvesting that money back into the home to get the highest price, even if we do a full-blown flip on your own house, you know, we have all that stuff in place and, and we can really help you get through this situation. By the way, did, were you guys thinking of selling the home? And it just, the walls break down. And from that point on, they're great conversations and we typically list the home the next day or the following or sometimes there's a lead time if we're, you know, doing clean outs. But, so think about that. Think about your strategy, your team, and getting that, you know, getting that polished into uh, kind of an elevator pitch, as old school sales trainers would call it. And that will be the, the huge difference. What I've seen, the people I've coached, the ones that weren't successful were the ones that had marble mouth. They had marble mouth because they didn't have confidence and they didn't get any listings, and unfortunately they failed. The ones that sat down and really thought about it and said, okay, so I'm going to take this serious. I'm, I'm, I know I'm doing it for the right reasons. I got the right people around me. They are like machines. I mean, they're they're just like Tammy, <laughs> the girl from last week's call that, that listed um, seven houses for $70,000 in gross commission on a $700 marketing spend in five weeks. You know, she was totally new to the industry and just went out and killed it because she took the time to really sit down and think it out and, and build the right people around her. So while you're waiting on your leads over the next week, if I could give any advice, it would be get those things in place and we'll worry about CRMs and mail and all that other stuff later. But that's, that's the, the really the key to success in this strategy. And Chad, you, you have a, I think you actually have a couple videos that, as far as getting the leads into different CRMs, correct? I do. I use Top Producer. I've I've worked in and built almost every CRM out there, and Top Producer is just the best thing for us for a CRM and a transaction management tool. So if anyone does have Top Producer, I can share on the Facebook page, the Facebook Mastermind group uh, for all the leads. Mastermind is the name of the group, and you guys should. Anyone who's signed up, we're, we're sending you invites. So if you're not in that group. Uh, be sure to request access if, if for some reason we sent it to the wrong email or something. But I can post in there the top producer action plan that we use. So basically when a lead, when a lead comes in, it assigns all the phone calls and mail and everything. So you can kind of see how I set mine up. And that will translate through to almost any CRM. Um, but don't feel like you have to have one. I mean, at one of, our, one of my clients, we're using Google Docs for her CRM. So we just upload the CSV each month. It just gets bigger and bigger. And we add columns for call one, call two, call three. And, and you know, we made a, a probate CRM out of a Google Sheet. So. Excellent, guys. Um, good questions. we got about ten minutes left. Who, who's got a burning question that they need answered? I just signed up, and I haven't received anything yet. But I, from what I'm hearing, that is perfectly normal, correct? Yeah, so there's there's a bit of a lead time, guys. So we the, the reason this is such a new strategy is because the data is so hard to get. So we have literally feet on the street that help us, you know, an army of people. So there is a lead time of typically eight to ten days from the moment you sign up. The good news okay. about that is that's a, a really good window to educate yourself and, and get ready for it and, you know, be really prepared. So when your leads come, you can take action that day. Okay. Hey Chad, let me let me jump in. As soon as you sign up, you should instantly get a welcome to all the leads dot com with access to our back back end page. Did you, yes, did I you got that. that? Okay, I got good. that. So you're, yes, you're in. Okay, because we had a lot of errands people that didn't complete the the registration. So that means you're in, and that means Chad will be getting in touch with you, and your leads your leads are coming. They're ordered and coming. Yep. Excellent. Who else, guys? We got time for maybe two more questions, two or three more. The I have a. Go ahead. Okay, the person that you were just referring to, Chad, Tammy, that sent out letters, um, got got very good responses, and she had no experience. What um, was her strategy? Did she just do direct mail? Did she follow it up with phone calls? She did. Um, she did what I do. So. She, she did three letters, 
and a ringless, vo ringless voicemail hitting the day of the letter or within a day of the letter hitting. And she actually used the probate options letter as a, the, the template that she used. And okay. it, it basically just kind of defines in bullet point format, this is what we can offer. You know, a quick cash sale, full retail sale, help clean out the property. It just kind of bullet points all those things that I highlighted about your team members. And then oh. she dropped a, a ringless voicemail right behind the mail. And they, I mean, and they were listing well above median price homes. That's why the she, you know, and I mean, they're basically ten thousand dollar commission. And not, not a single one of them had competition. She, ever, she was the only agent on every one of those. Okay. Um, what I loved, I had, think. She, go ahead, go ahead, Chip. She even had people call that that had, you know, sold the property prior to the death for estate planning purposes and Medicaid purposes. Um, call to thank her for the community service she was providing, which I thought was awesome. <laughs> Is there a template of that particular letter? Uh, if you go to the Facebook group under files, it's called the probate options letter. Great. Thank you. And Tammy's in Iowa. She's 19 years old and had her license for 90 days. I, I just, I love that. <laughs> I, just, I just love that. She, you know what she said? We said, what did you do? And she said, well, I, I, I guess I didn't know any better. I just did exactly what you told me to do. So, yeah, so, sometimes I think us veterans know too much. You know, we, we overcomplicate things. Well, yeah, I've got stories about that, too. Yeah, okay. somebody else was, another female voice was trying to ask a question there. Who was that? Yeah, yeah should we, we help, should, um, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just wondering what the name of that face group uh, was again. Right. It, Facebook group. It's all, all the leads mastermind. Mastermind okay, thank you. compound word. Thank you. Go ahead. Someone else? That was my question. Would we get an invitation or do we just need to go there and ask? You should have. We're using, as soon as you sign up, we use the email address that you signed up with, and it yeah. will directly from Facebook, it will send. What may be happening is it might just be automatically adding you to the group. So anyone who has signed up, look at the, the left-hand side of your Facebook under groups. Uh, I think our symbol is a little sprouting plant uh, since we're so new and, and a new strategy. We picked the sprouting plant. But it should be all all the leads mastermind. Um, you can search it as well and, and request access, and we'll let you in. Great. Time for one more question. Who has a great question to end, to end the call on? Anybody? All <laughs> right. Good. We, there's about 35, almost 40 people that showed up today. Uh, I challenge you guys, um, you know, get ready, like Chad said. Get your strategy in place when you get the leads. And do me a favor, when you become uh, really successful, come back and visit us sometime and share, share with the new people. I don't think we had a single one. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Do you have a question? Uh, yes, I do. I keep being muted and then unmuted, so I'm I'm not sure uh, what's causing yeah, that. that. There, was, there was a lot of noise on your line, I, I and I was trying to identify, but go ahead. You get to ask okay. the question of the day. Go ahead. Um, I, when you were talking initially about the uh, re coaching recordings. I got number one and number two, but I was muted out for number three. So can you tell me what that was? I think he muted me out. <laughs> um, it, so with with the coaching, we do it's broken into three sessions. Right. They're an hour hour long in great detail. So number one is strategy, number two is systems, and number three right. is sales. Okay. Great. Sales. Okay, got All that. Right. All right, guys, thank you so much for showing up today. Um, we will talk to you. Come, come back next Thursday. By then, you guys should be pretty close to getting your first group of leads. And uh, as always, if you need anything for chat or I, you know my phone number. I'll always call you back. Uh, my email is jim at alltheleads.com. And, Chad, what, what email do you prefer? Chad at alltheleads.com, or do you use the other one? Yeah, that's, that's fine. That's good? All right, jim or chad at alltheleads.com. Thank you, guys. Thank you for uh, joining the group. We're looking forward to hearing some uh, success stories from all of you in a month or two. Make it a great week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you.